E, energize to evangelize. You can write there, energize to evangelize. What are we talking about? Evangelism is not, first of all, a ministry. It's a commandment. If you are filled with the Spirit, you will evangelize. You will talk about Christ. And this energized, where will you find the energy, the, the zeal, the strength to evangelize? When you're excited? No. When you are filled with the Spirit. Because the Spirit of God has an agenda. The Spirit of God is faithful to the Word of God. The Spirit of God has an agenda with the Word that it must come forth through your life. So that every word will be fulfilled and then the second coming. Every word to be fulfilled in your life so that God will be glorified in everything. Everything. Everybody say everything. Let it be so. We go for the first verse. Philippians 2. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Everybody say, to will and to work. God is working in you, my brother, my sister. When you gave your life to Christ, your spirit became reborn. You are, you have died in Adam. When you eat from the fruit, you will surely die. Adam died immediately in, he didn't fall dead there, boom. Adam and Eve, no, but in his spirit, his spirit died. And therefore, what must happen? If you want to serve Christ, your spirit must be reborn. So Holy Spirit brought the rebirth in your spirit. Amen. And then God is working in you. The major, biggest, biggest, biggest miracle in your life is the day when Holy Spirit came and he brought the rebirth in your spirit. And everything became new. You became a new creation. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Where? In your spirit. Fullness of God in your spirit. Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. That from your spirit you're crying out, Abba, Papa. You understand your identity from your spirit. But so many times can be in a mess. So mind must be renewed so that you think his thoughts. So that your mind will be the mind of Christ. I mean, that's already in your spirit. But soul must come in line. Emotions must be healed. Emotions, you need to feel what God is feeling. What is my dad feeling about what is happening here? You must understand what is God feeling about the situation. Not just, God, I need to know your will. God, I need to know what you say. More and more, when you get into the word, get into being with God, you will start to feel what your father feels. Think the way your father thinks. Let it be so in Jesus' name. That is knowing him, knowing him. But if God is then working in you the will to do, and the will not just to do, but to do the work that what he has prepared for you, that's only through the Spirit. That's having the word of God. God... Come through your spirit and work the, a desire for your word, for your will. And that this will will not just be, I must submit and do his will. But I will do his will. I will do the work that he has prepared for me for his good pleasure. Satan, demons, will submit to his will. But not for his good pleasure. But you submit to his will to have this walk with God, this relationship with God, with the Spirit, where you and God do life together. Where you work, you work with God. Amen. And this only God can do. Only God can do it in your life. Otherwise, what are you going to do? Tomorrow you're just going to try again, you're going to try again, and the demon of performance, the demon of religion... Uh, you must do a lot of things tomorrow that just need to happen. You do all the good things. Yes, that's a good will of God. Not to swear, not to steal, not to beat the guy up, not to curse that guy, not to steal in whatever way you could think of. Not to compromise. No, that's the good will of God. Even some guys in the world will do that. The good, perfect, and pleasing will. Pleasing will for his good Pleasure is you walking as a son of God, as a daughter of God with your father. Only the spirit. Everybody say only the spirit. And from that place, when you, you are willing to do his will and you choose to do his will and you do the work that God has prepared for you, you will un, your life will evangelize. 
people will not know just you're a Christian. They will not just respect you as a Christian. They will be challenged by you. They will be challenged by you and some will say, yes, I want to have what he has. And others will be irritated, frustrated by your presence. Because they don't want what you have in your life. And if there's not no people that are irritated by your life, if there's not people that are attracted to your life, something is wrong because somewhere you're not allowing God to do a work in you to will and to work according to his good pleasure. Allow God to do it, please. But if you don't allow the Spirit to do it, other demons, other spirits will do it. So some other spirit is going to do a work in you. Finish and clear. If you like it or not, but your choice can be. Your choice can be that it will be the Spirit of God. Because when you allow the Spirit to work, when light is working, darkness must flee. Darkness cannot work. But if you don't allow light to work in you, the darkness must work and will work because that's how you invite the demons that's why how you invite other rubbish to come and work in you by not honoring the presence of the holy spirit to do a work in you so you can ignore the spirit and focus on this this and the stress and the temptation and all the things that you're supposed to do the rules at creare even some guys here it's okay but it, that spirit, those demons, that spirit of religion, that spirit of compromise will do a work in you for that demon's good pleasure. And you will feel rejected because that spirit of rejection is working in you. And for the pleasure of that demon of rejection, you will live with your rejection. How do you get out of that? Yield to the spirit of God. And let the Spirit of God do a work in you. And he will create in you the desire to want to do the will of God. And that you will do it while walking, doing life with God. Amen. Are you still here? When you hear the word of God, teach yourself to focus on it. Are you here? So when I hear the word of God, just so by the way. And your mind is otherwise. Or you are on your phone and you are doing whatever you want. It's okay. But the one that you ignore is you have no respect for the Holy Spirit, first of all. And secondly, you teach yourself how to ignore the Holy Spirit, especially when you hear the Word of God, like right now. Why? Because when the Word of God is heard, the Holy Spirit is so ready, so ready to make it a reality. So ready. To let it bring forth in you and let it flourish through you. That's why it's dangerous to be a Christian and just know, I know all the scriptures, I know this, I know this. Those guys, most dangerous against the kingdom of God. Those guys are guys that really, really, really can make sure that the spirit of God will not work. Religious guys. Religious guys, you've heard the word, you've heard this, you've heard that. It doesn't touch you anymore. If you're not like deciding, I will not yield to the spirit. No, nobody is saying that. But I'm so used to hear something and not allowing the spirit to work it in me. Because when I hear the word, if the spirit, if I'm filled with the spirit, it will energize me. It will energize me because the Spirit of God is excited about the Word. It's not excited when, I, when it makes sense, not excited when I understand it, not excited because, yeah, I can see how it works in my life. No, just excited because it is the Word of God. Demon of bitterness, very excited. When you talk about the bitterness, how you have an issue with that person. That demon of bitterness, very excited because you're talking his language. So he will be there to break your heart even more. To bring a deeper form of hardness in you against what God would want to do in your life. But the Spirit of God is excited when you heal to the Word and you allow the Spirit to do it in you. You will be energized to evangelize. Evangelize through your life. Through the good works God has prepared for you. He will never prepare some work for you. 
if his word is not seen through it. Evangelize means the word having impact in Bluefontein, impact in this univer at the university, impact at the school. How? Through your life. Amen. So we are we. Second one. Is it Acts 1 8? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. What are we talking about when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? First of all, we said Holy Spirit in you. When you gave your life to Christ, Spirit reborn, Holy Spirit in you. You are the temple of the Spirit. You will be a temple of demons or you will be a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. But now it says when the Holy Spirit comes over you. That's like when the hand of the Father comes over you and you're going to walk with the hand of the father when you're going to go with the hand of the father and respect the hand of the father that is when the holy spirit comes over you that is called baptism in the spirit baptism in christ that is when you gave your life to christ the holy spirit in you baptism in water to testify about what that you are baptized in christ but then baptism in holy spirit is father's hand over you and if you are baptized in the holy spirit you will see in your life you have this passion to talk about christ you have this passion to talk about christ like jeremiah said it's like a fire shut up in my bones there's a fire and it must come out it must come out are you with me are you still here now I want to say, Holy Spirit, yes, he's like a fire. Yes, he's like the wind. Yes, he's like the living water. Yes, he's like a dove. But there's the person of the Holy Spirit that is so precious, that is so precious. When it happened in my life that one thing that nearly took me away from, from the word of God in, in the army, I think I've talked about this before. When Holy Spirit told me to phone this one guy, and I phoned him, but then I put down the phone after like four or five times it just rang. And then afternoon, I felt it again, pick up the phone, rang, and pop, put it down. Evening, writes a letter to encourage him. Sunday, Monday, posted. Wednesday, he committed suicide. And the, and the condemnation, I could not see how I and Henny stand before the Father, and the Father says, he forgives me. It's impossible, impossible, impossible. And I had to run to God in that sense. And I realized it's only with God. God, I, I don't know what to do. What else? But tomorrow I'm not going to go on, the, on that stage in that school and talk about you and sing about you. Give me something else to do. But I stayed with God, stay with God, stay with God. And God said to me, I must do a specific specific uh, evangelistic gesture let's call it like that but i said god to who and with who and for the first time in my life when i i wasn't in the right place but i was there in my communication with god and right there god said to me and i can't remember the name let's say uh, uh peter labas or something like that in standard eight and I thought, whoa, whoa. And I went to the school before the time and asked, is there a Peter Labaskachny in the school in Standard 8? Yes, there's a Peter Labaskachny in Standard 8. And you know, I walked out there, but I was crying. And I was just thinking about the scripture that David said, God, cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And with that incident right there, I will never, never, never forget how I realized with a shock how precious is his presence in my life. Let's say precious his presence in your life. Let it be so, my brother, my sister, that you understand is the Holy Spirit in you that's going to do the work. It's the Holy Spirit over you. So that today you will have an impact. You will be a witness today when you go out, when you go there to pick and pay, wherever you go. And you will have an impact here into the nations. When? Today? Tomorrow? When? When you pray 
Pray for the Palestinians. Pray for the Israelites. Pray for the guys who don't have food. Millions of them up in Africa. When you pray, you, there's a witness in the spirit that God is a God that provides. And when those guys in Ethiopia, then when those guys pray and that mom crying out, seeing their, their child, their children dying because of no food, and they pray, you know there's a prayer that she's praying, but you know there's other hundred prayers that is in unity with her prayer because some hundred people were not so selfish just praying for themselves. They, through the Holy Spirit, have an impact in Ethiopia. Because those hundred prayers go with that prayer of that woman crying out before God for her children that has no food. Because those hundred didn't think just about themselves. They seek the kingdom. When the Holy Spirit is over you, you will be a witness. A witness here, a witness in the spirit, in nations, today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. You will choose to start to pray in tongues, not just so that your situation changes God, but show me. And just you feel to pray in tongues. You don't know if you're praying for somebody in, in Italy, somebody in Papua New Guinea. You don't know. But sometimes just start to pray in tongues. Just be there. Because the more you allow Holy Spirit to work, the less some other demons will work. And Take all the strength out of you. That tomorrow in a spirit of performance, you must deal with a crisis. For some reason, I could have energy when there's a crisis and you just go for it. You've seen that? Sometimes you had it with that person. And for some reason, just have the strength to say what you want to that person. Not you guys, other people. But you've heard about the story. Okay, what am I saying? You can have energy in a lot of ways, but some way you need to make room for the Holy Spirit. Respect His presence in your life. And let Him be the power, the energy, the strength in your life. Amen. Then your message will be from the Father. But let it be other spirits, then you will evangelize. Evangelize has to do with a message. Then your message will be according to right and wrong, according to bitterness, according to your opinion, according to your compromise, according to your justification for whatever you want to do. There will be a message. But when he's with God, we call it evangelize because if evangelos is it's like this is a message. To evangelize is to open up the message for Bloemfontein. You are the letter, you are the letter of Christ, written by leaders, the word says. And the Holy Spirit is the ink. The Holy Spirit, according to the word, 2 Corinthians. Holy Spirit is the ink. But you know, on your letter, on your heart, you can allow a lot of demons, a lot of people to write a lot of rubbish. Praise God, through the blood of Christ, it can be. What is eight fear? What is eight fear in English? Eraser. Okay, that thing. Praise God for the blood of Christ. So that you can start to over again. But on a Sunday we open up the letter and we close it and we put it in a very nice envelope during the week because professionally we're not allowed to talk about Jesus in that place so we put it in the envelope. Not a letter of Christ to Bluefontaine or the university or the school or wherever you work. No, 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 no. Sorry, Lord, we're not going to do that because we are professional. Therefore, we cannot do what your word says. And then Sunday, we open up the envelope again and let things be written on the letter of my heart, the tablets of my heart, and then, what is that? What is that? But if you are filled with the Spirit and the hand of the Father is over you, the Holy Spirit is over your life, you will see that you don't want to put it away. You need to speak about Christ. Oh, come on, man. Let's be those witnesses. Get yourself into that. You know, at one stage, and I look back and I see, hey, man, what happened to me in some facets? I remember sometimes, it's just, I just need to get out there. Okay, sounds freaky, eh? So even sometimes I had this thing in the, in the first 10 years of Creare, when he's going very intense and there's a lot of challenges, whatever. I said, God, I just need a break. And I go out and I said, what am I going to say to the people? And my break time is I'm going to go out. I'm going to tell a, uh, say a sentence to like whoever. 
So I would walk, I remember, in the city. Just uh, walk like, let's say, a kilometer all together. And I have a sentence like, you are precious to Christ. So whoever, where I pass, you are precious to Christ. You are precious to Christ. You are precious to Christ. Oh, man. And the more I do, the more I'm just excited because the Holy Spirit in me is excited about the word. And I'm energized. I'm not, oh, I'm so tired. I went and did evangelism. I, uh, you know that story of, I said it uh, to a few guys, you have an appointment with God. You have an appointment with God. You have an appointment with God. And I just went in this colored guy. He turned around in Afrikaans and he said, Hey, asa kan nie moeilijkheid? <laughs> Am I in trouble? <laughs> he couldn't believe God has an appointment with him. But it was, uh, it was so exciting to see what God can do. Oh, come on, man. What about speak the word of God in the guidance of the Spirit, and you will see energy rising up in you from the Holy Spirit. But if you want to say something to that other guy, you will find some energy in you rising up. Sometimes we call it anger. Sometimes we call it fear. Sometimes we call it anxiety. But you go with the words, with the message of the anxiety, and more anxiety will come. You're going with the words of the gospel. You're going with this. You will see so many things happen. But this, you know, the word is like that match. That Everybody say, remember, you know, in 20 years, people will think, what did that guy preach about? You know? But there's a Firoki do I a a matchbox. Donkey don't I? Matchbox. And you know every scripture you have you have maybe a billion matches. And every scripture you read, if it's under the unction of the spirit the red, it's like a chick. A chick. But some of you guys you can sit here and some guys in other churches they can sit here and it's like chick. but it's just pfft. And that demon of boredom says, and that is, and your flesh, and your focus is gone, and and doesn't matter if there's hundred matches that's been lit, but it will not touch you. The Holy Spirit will not touch you. The Holy Spirit will not touch you. But the demon of arrogance of you know this and you've heard this and will just whatever match is lit, whatever script is coming your way, you will just. The wind of that other demon. But the wind of the spirit will guide you. And when it's, it will let the fire. Because the fire is burning in your spirit. But it could be this. And it must burn brighter. Light the fire again in my life, Lord. As you yield to the spirit. Every word read under the unction of the spirit. Every word read under the unction of the Holy Spirit. My brother, my sister. He said more of his fire. More of his fire. When you say, God... Um, tonight, when you're going to read the word, when you think upon the word, when you think while sitting here upon the word, it's something, it's that igniting in you more and more and more. Are you still here? But when you are, when you are stressed or something happens and you got this fright and you realize, like my, my grandmother, she was very visible. Let's say like that. Very visible. And, uh, and they were farmers, and she would walk like this, and she would get up very, and with a, you know, it's not racist, but the Afrikaner bull, whoa, was an attitude thing, you know? They can be very, what is, uh, temper, they had this, this temper. So everybody, many, many farmers, they would be afraid. They say, hey, watch the, that Afrikaner bull with a lot of, not a lot of horns, only two. But uh, in any case, and so the Afrikaner bull came for her. And for some reason, some, just within a few seconds, this big Oma of mine, she was within a few seconds over that fence and to the on the other side my grandfather was not concerned he just cracked up laughing Yay! he was in trouble for very long with my grandmother <laughs> but 
That grandma, I wish I could have seen that. But my grandmother, she went over that fence within two, three seconds. Bull! On the other side, flat, but okay. But the bull couldn't find her. Because some message, something clicked in here. She had the brains to realize something needs to happen now. Now you have the brains, the mind of Christ in your spirit. And if you understand the unction of the spirit, things will happen. Things will happen. Your life will not be as it was yesterday. It will be different if you allow the spirit to work. And that the word of God is that, and you take it. You take that precious flame through the word. It will happen for you. Let it not go, this matchbox. Let it not be a waste in your life, the word of God. But that every day there's some and some you miss, but the fire of God growing stronger, stronger, from glory to glory, supposed to be. Amen. Okay, the next one. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Your work that God has for you, you cannot do it by your might. Oh, yes, we can try like my grandmother. She had a lot of might, a lot of strength when she got over that fence. Hello? You can do a lot of things in your own strength. Peter said, over my dead body, my translation, nobody will kill you, Jesus. In, with my might, with my, every strength that is in me, nobody will kill you. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. With your strength, your might, unfortunately, the normal human being, even like an animal, wants to be in control. So, so with my strength, with the might that is in me, with my abilities, I can be in control and one of the biggest things for you, challenges in front of you, is to let it go, to lose the control. Not under the guy like with the temper, he lost control of his life and he just went for it. And in his anger and in his bitterness and in his whatever, he just lashed out. Bleh. Hello? But... That's just a copycat of what's supposed to happen. And that is that you stand aside, not your strength, not, not by power, not by might, but by the spirit that you lose the control and allow the spirit to speak through you. Allow the spirit to give you strategy. Allow the spirit to tell you things that you've never heard before. Are you here? It happened many times in my life, even in preaching, that I would get up here in other places and I don't have one sentence. I remember a few times walking past Selena and said, pray for me. There's not one sentence. <laughs> She's gone. And sat here and just, God, give me this verse. And I open up and I get that verse. And suddenly there's a flow. And afterwards, I, I don't know about the rest. But then I'm excited and I'm thinking, God, what did you say? What did you say? Help me to re remind me. What did you say? When you are open to God. The Spirit will take what is in you when you open the Word. And you will stand amazed at what God's going to do through you. When you open your mouth, you speak to the, that atheist, that guy that just cursed the name of Jesus. You start to speak to that man. And you will see what he does. You remember the story I told, uh, told uh, 34 times about uh, in, the, in the glass palace. What is the glass palace now here? The glass palace. You know in the city? municipality to get permission to build a Christian school here on the farm ground and uh, this was this one guy and uh, the final signature we need and he was sitting by the he said, yeah I heard, yes us. this is always a thing in yes us. You, you've, you've heard the guys using the name of God in vain like that you've never heard it oh and by the third time I said, no, oh God, this is not right. So I just don't, I see you speaking to God a lot. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm, you are mentioning my master, hey? And then he would say, yes, yes, he loves you. And he would say, and go to, yes, yes, he died for you. He gave you everything. And every time I just trust God for a sentence. By the 20th, 30th time, it, it was just like, and I could see he was trying not to say Jesus because he's going to hear the gospel. You know, I'm not going to, you cannot use the name of the Lord in vain. You're going to burn in hell. No, ask Holy Spirit for creativity. 
at that moment. Are you with me? I dare you. I dare you. When there's a movie or you watch a movie with friends and they use the name of the Lord, that you will stand up and say, yes, I love him. That's my Lord Jesus Christ. Don't, if you don't, do, don't want to do that, just walk out, please. Are you still here? Okay. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, God will do a thing. Okay, Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. How? You think you must preserve life. You must see that you survive in that what is happening and that what is not happening in your life. No, no. You're supposed to understand the spirit in me. If the spirit in me raised Christ from the dead, how much more? The things that you struggle with, the things that can bring death in you. That what you felt, oh, those, those days I had a passion. Those days I, I had the zeal for God. And now... After this guy, I had an issue with him, and after that happened, and after that happened, and after I've learned how to harden my heart when I hear the word of God, and he does not have impact on, on my life anymore, how will I get back? Start with a scripture like this. God doesn't start there when you started to grow cold. He starts with, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, how much more? How much more, your mortal bodies, how much more is God able to deal with that thing in your life that is bringing death? Amen. Death is supposed to have no authority over your life unless you give death that authority, that destructive forces that can destroy your life. You allow that in your life, it will destroy your life. It cannot take eternal life from you, but it will destroy what God had for you here on earth. No, let it not be so in Jesus' name. Next one. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the... Anybody here? Filled with the... With the Holy Spirit, and began to speak the word of God with boldness. If you are filled with the Spirit, you will speak the word with boldness. One other thing, it will just start to happen. If you are filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will push you. It will come forth that you want to speak the word of God. You are getting to the word. He will create the desire to get into the word, and then it will come forth from your mouth. It will come forth through your mouth, and when you speak, atmosphere will change the atmosphere in the building the atmosphere in the classroom the atmosphere there where you are busy with the atmosphere will change and if it doesn't change you know you have the spirit of the world and you flow with the spirit of the world but if you are filled with the spirit don't get up there in a demon of religion and start to judge all the others no rubbish but if you are filled with the spirit it will happen but what is the key here when they had Prayed. Prayed is that conversation. It's not just your request. That's one facet of hundred facets of prayer. But prayer is this awesome, awesome privilege that you can have this conversation with God, as we said in the few we, past weeks. Is this conversation with God. Conversation. Continual conversation. Openness. Openness between you and God. There's an open window between you between you and heaven earth and heaven connects who how through your life prayer prayer there's an open heaven over the city if the church understood how to pray but if you don't understand how to pray i just want the atm relationship you don't have a relationship a love relationship with the atm unless he gives you a lot of money more than what you asked. <laughs> Ask for. Uh, hello. Unfortunately, some prayer lives go into that direction. But no, let it not be so. The church is going to grow up into maturity. Grow up into maturity. 
Because what will happen? The sons of God, who is the sons of God? Those who grew up, that is not, um, you're a child of God because you need to be dependent. But when the child that is dependent and he has a lot of needs and God as a good father will provide for him, well, then the, sometime the child must grow up. And, but then if he keeps on asking certain things, that's nagging, that's immaturity. That he becomes childish. But the child becomes a son of God in the son of God. Where the son of God is seen through your life, you are called a son of God. And that's where Romans 8 says, these are the sons of God who are led by the spirit. Child of God, spirit is in you. But the mature man, the guy that grew up, that's the guys that are led by the Spirit. That's the hand of God over your life. And where the hand goes, there you go. There you go. That's the guy that grow up. And there will be boldness. But through prayer where you position yourself with God, through prayer where you have, are in conversation with God, you stay in conversation with God, with God, it will just happen. You have this language as the conversation between you and God, it will just happen. Holy Spirit will be there. Boltons will come forth. But you stay in conversation with bitterness. You stay in conversation with rejection. You stay in conversation with fear. You stay in conversation with greed. You stay in conversation with your own very good, justifiable, rubbish ideas. Oh, some spirit will manifest and will give you boldness to speak the chamors that you were thinking about, that you were talking to yourself about in your heart. You know? He talked about somebody, but you're not right in what you are talking about. You know that in your conscience. But somewhere is you keep on in this conversation with that chamors or that bitterness or that justification or that thing. You keep on talking. It's going to come out of your mouth. You will have the boldness. Boldness. You will speak the word of rubbish. You will speak the word of bitterness. You will speak the word of chamors. You will speak the word of revenge. You will speak the word and you will give your life for that. That's how millions of people now at this stage in the world because of these guys being killed, that, those guys being killed. Unjustifiable the war from Russia into Ukraine. And everybody angry. But then more and more and more and more sons were slaughtered, Russian guys killed in Ukraine. And suddenly more guys in Russia angry at Ukraine and out of bitterness and out of revenge, my, my brother's blood must be, there must be revenge. There must be payback. But where did it start? How did it start? In the beginning, where Russians said, what the heck is this? This is a war from Putin. I don't need this war. I don't want to kill my brothers and my sisters and my friends there in Ukraine. We are speaking all the same language. And what's happening now? Forced into the war. Angry in Russia. But the more people were killed there, the more these demons give the message of revenge, bitterness, this blood, there must be revenge. The blood of Abel speak of revenge. The blood of Christ speak of forgiveness. And somewhere the blood of Christ must be presented to the nation of Russia, to the nation of Ukraine, to the Palestinians, to the Israelites, to whoever, so many places, to your own self. So that the message will be of forgiveness. But it's only through the Holy Spirit it can happen. Only through the Holy Spirit it can happen. There will be boldness. That's why we see in Ephesians 6, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. This is the sword that does not belong to you. The sword of the Spirit. This word, there's a man that this word does not go without the Spirit. It's the Sword of the Spirit of God. You don't touch this word without the Spirit of God. Because the devil and hell took this word in his hands and presented the word to Jesus as the best strategy for the Son of God to fall. The greatest temptation from hell to Jesus is, let's present the word without the Spirit of God. The word says, you can make the stones Bread, you know, and the devil walks with the word of God. And then let's take him to the, uh, the word of God says that you can, the angels will protect you. But the word of God says also this. 
the word of God says the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Christ in Christ Jesus. So, uh, Jesus, I present to you all the kingdoms of this world. Just focus for a moment more on me. And that's worship me. Get behind me, Satan. Because the Lord you and him alone you will serve. I am most dangerous when the devil comes with the word of God in your life. So you can sit here and don't hear what the Spirit is saying to you. Don't hear what the Spirit is saying to you. But let the devil present the word of God to you while you listen to the sermon. Please. So that Satan is so much, he's so much more excited about your life as you walk out here. Because he saw <laughs> that you didn't take the word with the Spirit. And you don't sit here and say, devil present the word please to me. No. But when you don't take it through the spirit, the devil just take the space. Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. Every demon from hell is so ready to take that space when you don't give the space to the Holy Spirit to present the word to you accurately. The sword, the sword is the most dangerous. More people slaughtered in the name of religion than people slaughtered through world wars. Millions, 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 millions of peoples, people through wars, but not even the amount slaughtered in the name of religion. Most dangerous weapon, not a missile, but the word of God without the spirit. How the guys even in the religion, hello? Those guys say the, the, what you call them, the Houthis? No. I don't know. They're in Yemen. And that guy saying how, what they did, and uh, praise, praise Allah, praise Allah, praise Allah for this. And all, all these guys, they are martyrs. They are martyrs for Allah and Muhammad. And you know, you, and they, that's their comfort. Their comfort is my two babies and my little son and my aunt and my mother, uh, they all died and some of them are still screaming under the rubble, but they are martyrs for Muhammad and Allah. And they say comfort. And I think how much, millions of time more, we're supposed to find comfort in God instead of running to a demon of revenge or bitterness to, find, to try to find revenge against those guys that did that and did that and did that. Oh, man, we can talk about this all day. But may Holy Spirit guide you. May you not grieve the Spirit of God. May you not quench the Spirit of God and grieve the Spirit of God by ignoring Him. How do you quench the Spirit? How do, is the Spirit grieved? How is He hurt in that sense? By you ignoring His presence. By you honoring the presence of your opinion more than honoring the presence of the Holy Spirit. God's going to help us through his blood. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, but we are here at your mercy through the blood of Christ. And thank you that through the blood of Christ you wash us clean for so many times that we have ignored your spirit. So many times we've done that was not right in your eyes, Lord. Help us, Lord, that our words, our work, our walk will be with you and you alone. To walk with you, God, that's we need to give ourselves through your grace. It's not just walking with you, God, but as you've called Adam to walk with you, so you're calling us every man, every woman by name today to walk with you. But for that, I need to surrender my work, my will, my worship, all in your hand. Come, Holy Spirit, and do a work in us, please, Lord. With your holy fire, burn away all the rubbish in our lives, please. Thank you, Lord. Baptize us in your fire. But let the freshness of you, Holy Spirit, as the living water just come forth through us so that we can understand as we wait on you, wait on you, not wait for an answer, as we wait on you, we will soar up like eagles on the wind of the Spirit, on the wind of the Spirit, where it will be your strength. Teach us like the eagle how to wait on your Spirit. Teach us like the eagle how to soar and that the wind of the spirit will carry us into a majestic majestic strategies as the eagle we thank you for that you that you do it every man and woman in this place that you touch everyone through your spirit
I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Let's all say, amen, amen, amen.